Good evening and Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to St. George's Anglican Church in Guelph, Ontario, Canada, for a family Christmas Eve like no other we've ever had, at least in my experience. We're having a family Christmas Eve, and we have no families here, so we showed you all the nativity sets that we have, so at least we know we have the Holy Family here. And we have a few participants who are helping uh, with this service that we're bringing to you. One of the things you can do to me if you're watching for me, actually, if you're watching live, is uh, send in a message if you're gathered as a family, and uh, Laura can wink at me, she's behind the camera, and let me know there's actually people there and children there, uh, because it seems the right thing to do. So Merry Christmas from Guelph. Um, I'm Rafe Blackman. I serve as the rector here at St. George's. And Jerry Manning is our organist and uh, music director this evening. Our singers are Sophie Wilhelm, Laura McDonald, Catherine Manning, and Naomi Fraser. As I mentioned earlier, earlier Laura, Laura Keller is behind the camera. And, uh, and she's been doing a fantastic job with that these many months of COVID. And Tony is our sexton. Before we begin, we wish to acknowledge that we meet on land that at the time of contact was held by the Attawadron as an area of trade and ceremony by the two rivers. At various times, the land was occupied by both the Punashni from the south and the Anishinaabe from the north. In more recent times, the Huron Treaty gave rights to the Mississaugas of new credit. May we who dwell on or visit this land also be good stewards and honor those who came before us. And now, to you from St. George's, all of you who are at home watching live and those who will watch later, enjoy this family Christmas. People who walked in darkness, sometimes we walk in darkness, have seen a great light. We live in darkness and in light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Whenever we find ourselves in the night, God's morning dawns anew. You have increased the nation's joy. The people rejoice as at the time of harvest. For 
with the yoke of their burden, you have broken. The pressure, the tension, the anxiety of the past fade as we gather in this place. For a child has been born for us. God's child has come to be with us. One who will rule with peace and justice forever and ever, and through whose love we are all children of God. We pray. God of grace and wonder, on this night we, like the shepherds, are amazed. We hear again the message of the angels proclaiming peace on earth, and we recall the angel's story of a baby born in a manger, and we know beyond any doubt that you love us more than we can ever know. Thank you. So here we are on a Christmas Eve, gathered as family. Well, not really gathered the usual way. You're at home and I'm here. But I don't know about you, I woke up this morning and it was eight degrees outside and all the lawn was green. And by the time I was coming in for this service, it was snowing and the temperatures had dropped. So we do have a white Christmas and maybe one that's appropriate for curling up and telling a Christmas story. And I just happen to have a Christmas story to share with you, one I think that's very important for us to hear. It's a good story, one that I've known all my life. And yes, it has to do with the Christmas tree that was just sung about. This is the first Christmas tree by Eugene Field. Once upon, once upon a time, the forest was in a great commotion. Early in the evening, the wise old cedars had shaken their heads ominously and predicted strange things. They had lived in the forest many, many years, but never had they seen such marvelous sights as were to be seen now in the sky and upon the hills and in the distant village. Tell us what you see, pleaded a little vine. We who are not as tall as you cannot see any of these wonderful things. Describe them to us that we may enjoy them with you. I am filled with such amazement, said one of the cedars, that I can hardly speak. The whole sky seems to be aflame, and the stars appear to be dancing among the clouds. Angels walk down from heaven to the earth and enter the village, or talk with the shepherds upon the hills. The vine listened in silent astonishment. Such things never before had happened. The vine trembled with excitement. Its nearest neighbor was a tiny little tree, so small it scarcely ever was noticed, yet it was a very beautiful little tree. And the vines and the ferns and the mosses and other humble residents of the forest loved it dearly. How I should like to see the angels, sighed the little tree, 
and how I should like to see the stars dancing among the clouds. It must be very beautiful. As the vine and the little tree talked of these things, the cedars watched with increasing interest the wonderful scenes over and beyond the confines of the forest. Soon they thought they heard music, and they were not mistaken, for the whole air was full of the sweetest harmonies you ever heard upon earth. What beautiful music, cried the little tree. I wonder where it comes from. The angels are singing, said a cedar, for none but angels can make such sweet music. But the stars are singing too, said another cedar. Yes, and the shepherds on the hills join in the song. And what a strangely glorious song it is. The trees listened to the singing, but they did not understand its meaning. It seemed to be an anthem, and it was of a child that had been born. But further than this, they did not understand. The strange and glorious song continued all the night, and all that night the angels walked to and fro, and the shepherd folk talked with the angels, and the stars danced and caroled in the high heaven. And it was nearly morning when the cedars cried out, They are coming to the forest! The angels are coming to the forest! And surely enough, this was true. The vine and the little tree were terrified, and they begged their older and stronger neighbors to protect them from harm. But the cedars were too busy with their own fears to pay any heed to the faint pleadings of the humble little vine and the little tree. The angels came into the forest, singing the same glorious anthem about the child, and the stars sang in chorus with them until every part of the woods rang out with the echoes of that wondrous song. There was nothing in the appearance of this angel host to inspire fear. They were clad all in white, and there were crowns upon their fair heads and golden harps in their hands. Love, hope, charity, compassion, and joy beamed from their beautiful faces, and their presence seemed to fill the forest with a divine peace. The angels came through the forest, to where the little tree stood, and gathering around it, they touched it with their hands and kissed its little branches and sang even more sweetly than before. And their song was about the child, the child, the child that had been born. Then the stars came down from the skies and danced and hung upon the branches of the little tree, and they too sang that song, the song of the child. And all the other trees and the vines and the ferns and the mosses beheld it in wonder, nor could they understand why all these things were being done, and why this exceeding honor should be done to this little tree. When the morning came, the angels left the forest, all but one angel, who remained behind and lingered near the little tree. Then a cedar asked, Why do you tarry with us, holy angel? And the angel answered, I stay to guard this little tree, for it is sacred and no harm shall come to it. The little tree felt quite relieved by this assurance, and it held up its head more confidently than ever before, and how it thrived and grew and waxed in strength and beauty. The cedars said they never had seen the light. The sun seemed to lavish its choicest rays upon the little tree, heaven dropped its sweetest dew upon it, and the winds never came to the forest that they did not forget their rude manners and linger to kiss the little tree and sing it their prettiest songs. No danger ever menaced it, no harm threatened, for the angel never slept. Through the day and through the night the angel watched the little tree and protected it from all evil. Oftentimes. The trees talked with the angel, but of course they understood little of what he said, for he spoke always of the child who was to become the master, and always when he talked this way he caressed the little tree and stroked its branches and leaves and moistened them with his tears. It all was so very strange that none of the forest could understand. So the years passed, the angel watching his blooming charge, Sometimes the beast strayed toward the little tree and threatened to devour its tender foliage. Sometimes the wood persons came in with their axes intent upon hewing down the straight and beautiful tree. Sometimes a hot, consuming breath of drought swept from the south and sought to blight the forest and all of its verdure. 
The angel kept them from the little tree. Serene and beautiful it grew, until now it was no longer a little tree, but the pride and glory of the forest. One day the tree heard someone coming through the forest. Up to now the angel had always hastened to its side when anyone approached, but now the angel strode away and stood under the cedars, away from the tree. Dear angel, cried the tree, can you not hear the footsteps of someone approaching? Why do you leave me? Have no fear, said the angel, for the one who comes is the master. And the master came to the tree and beheld it. He placed his hands upon the smooth trunk and branches, and the tree was thrilled with a strange and glorious delight. Then he stooped and kissed the tree, and then he turned and went away. Many times after that, he came to the forest, and when he came, it was always to where the tree stood. Many times he rested beneath the tree and enjoyed the shade of its foliage, and listened to the music of the wind as it swept through with the rustling leaves. Many times he slept there, and the tree watched over him, and the forest was still, and all of its voices were hushed, and the angel hovered near like a faithful sentinel. A while along, Woodsmen came with the master to the forest, but they were the friends of the master, and they sat in the shade of the tree, and they talked with him of matters which the tree never could understand. Only it heard that the talk was of love and charity and gentleness, and it saw the master was beloved and venerated by his friends. It heard them tell of the master's goodness and humility, how he had healed the sick, and raised the dead and bestowed all sorts of blessings wherever he walked. And the tree loved the master for his beauty and his goodness. And when he came to the forest, it was full of joy. But when he wasn't there, he was sad. And the other trees of the forest joined in its happiness and its sorrow, for they too loved the master, and the angel always hovered near. The master came one night alone into the forest and his face was pale with anguish and wet with tears. And he fell upon his knees and prayed. The tree heard him, and all the forest was still, as if it were standing in the presence of death. And when the morning came, the angel, the sentinel, had disappeared. Then there was a great confusion in the forest, and there was the sound of rude voices and clashing of swords and staves. Strange people appeared, uttering loud oaths and cruel threats, and the tree was filled with terror. It called aloud for the angel, but the angel did not come. Alas, cried the vine, they have come to destroy the tree, the pride and glory of the forest. The forest was agitated, but it was all in vain. The strange people plied their axes with cruel vigor, and the tree was hewn to the ground. Its beautiful branches were cut away and cast aside, and its soft, thick foliage was strewn to the tenderer mercies of the winds. They are killing me, cried the tree. Why isn't the angel here to protect me? But no one heard the piteous cry, none but the other trees of the forest, and they wept, and the little vine wept too. Then the cruel people dragged the despoiled and hewn tree from the forest, and the forest saw that beauteous tree no more. But the night wind that swept down from the city of the great king that night to ruffle the bosom of distant Galilee tarried in the forest a while to say that it had seen that day a cross upraised on Calvary, the tree on which stretched the body of the dying master. You see, my friends, we have to remember that Christmas is about God's purpose. That the infancy stories, Jesus' birth stories, all are leading somewhere. That it is all about God's great gift of salvation to everyone and to the whole of creation. And so this story ties it in together right from that night in Bethlehem when a child was born to the very end to the connection with nature between Jesus and the tree that would become the cross on which he gave his life. So as we think about Christmas and do all the merriment 
in the ways that we can during this COVID time, let us also think about the great purpose of God's love and how we can live that together and make this world a better place and bequeath a better future to all those who come after us. For God came to bring love, compassion, hope, and peace in his Son amongst us, dwelling with us and in us now and forever. We're going to turn now to, breath, to bless the nativity scene, and we're going to center on the one here at the front, but you know that we have many other with us here in the church. And as we do this, it's a tradition to give this blessing on Christmas Eve. Eternal God, you sent your only begotten Son to take our human nature upon him and to be born this night of the Virgin Mary. Bless, we pray, this creche, that it may be a sign of his humble birth, and grant that we who joyfully behold his appearing may be strengthened to greet him when he comes again in glory. Even the same Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. respond to what we've heard and what we shared, I invite you to pray with me. And the response for these short prayers is, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God of life, tonight the world is reborn with the birth of Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your child who came to show us your way. In your love, hear our prayer. Loving God, you are the guardian of the poor. Many children are being born tonight in places no better than that stable in Bethlehem. We pray for them. In your love, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we thank you that we have a warm place to gather and friends and family to care for us. We pray for all who are sick, lonely, in trouble, or afraid. Particularly in this time and season of pandemic, we pray for all of those affected by COVID, for those who are frontline workers and those who are research scientists and those who work to make each other's lives better in times that are hard. We pray that we may be healed and comforted in your love. Hear our prayer. God among us, in the birth of Jesus, you show us your hope for the world. We pray for ourselves and for each other, that we may be filled with hope and new life, not now and always, in your love. Hear our prayer. Amen. And so we have to do this from a distance, because we are at a distance, but we come now to a time where we share God's peace. And so I invite you to greet the people who may be with you in your bubble and to reach out across social media and to remember to always greet those that you meet in the way with a sign and a symbol of peace. God is with us. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. My friends, peace be with you.
As we continue with the liturgy of the table, we pray over these gifts and we include in these gifts the gifts that are ourselves, the gifts that people give to support our ministries here, however you do that, and there's many ways, and I'm sure a message will bump up at some point in this um, service that tells you how you can do that, or you can go to our webpage. But we offer all of these gifts that we give and receive from God. We offer you these gifts, loving God, as an expression of our thanksgiving for your grace and goodness. We remember your Christmas gift of Jesus to be our friend and Savior. We are your children, and we belong to you. Amen. My friends, may God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you, God among us, for on this holy night we found your child Jesus wrapped in rags, lying in a feed box in a Bethlehem barn, one of the poorest among a poor people. We ordinary folk heard angels sing that night. Jesus took the cup, saying, Blessed are you, holy God, maker of all, for you give us wine to gladden our hearts. He gave it to his friends, saying, This is my blood, which I give for you. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in memory of me. With this bread and this wine, we celebrate the birth and life of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, and make them holy, so that we, your people, being fed by holy things, may share hope and peace, joy and love with the world, through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, now and forever. Pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to life and life. So it's been a strange number of months since COVID came. First we shut the church and did all online, and then we were invited back to a hybrid with some people here and some online, and now we're back to having no one here except those who are taking part in the service. 
So most of you receive this Christmas communion as you did your Easter communions. Um, you receive it spiritually, where you are, in your homes. And so we invite you to receive spiritual communion. And there is a prayer, if you've downloaded it, that you can say to help you do that. But all of us are brought together and knit together in one community, in one Christ, in one God, in one communion, as we share in the body and blood of Christ that gives life to the world. These are indeed are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks.
continue in prayer. Source of truth and joy, may we who have received the gift of divine life always follow the way of your Son. This we ask in the name of Saint Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for a magic. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. We come now to the time where we move to the blessing in the end and send you into the rest of your Christmas Eve. Some of you might join us again later because we'll be back live at 7.30 with a twist on carols and readings for Christmas. It's more of a community event that we've been doing for a number of years and then the traditional midnight mass um, that we do at 10 o'clock. I want to thank um, uh, those who are here to help me this evening, uh, Laura Keller, who is the videographer, uh, Tony Atia, who is our sexton and keeps things safe and clean, and Sophie Wilhelm, and Laura McDonald, who are singing, and Catherine Manning and Naomi Fraser, who are also singing, and they're a little closer than they're supposed to be because they're in the same bubble and same household, because they're actually mother and daughter, and when Naomi came in, we heard her say, Grandpa, to Jerry. So that's the connections there. And so thank you, Jerry, as well. We have heard the good news. Jesus is born. We go to share God's love with others. Know that Jesus has come not just for us, but for all the world. We go to share God's love with others. 
May the love of God who created us and who came down as one of us and who is with us all bless and sustain you this night and always. Amen. My friends, go in peace to love and serve the Prince of Peace. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas.